I was thinking. I was in a movie theatre the other day trying to watch Dracula vs Iron Man and I was incredibly irritated by everything around me. Like a raptor that's hatched too early and has entered a world where the only sound is the tapping of fingers on cell phones and the wearing of a geriatric air conditioning unit that's about as efficient as a punker waller with fuckamelic limbs. I think we can all agree, began every disagreeable statement ever made, that movies are best seen on big screens and heard through amps cranked all the way to 11. And there's nowhere else you can do that unless you're Howard Hughes or Dr Evil. And you never see those two together, do you? And like them, you've got your own private theatre. I have seen people mock up their own in the basement or dungeon, I'm talking to you, Hugh Bonneville. Not that he's kinky, that's just where he keeps freedom of the press. Shut up, says my lawyer. But you know, if you're going to do it, you have to do it big, says Hugh Bonneville. Okay, I'm sorry, I know that's not new. But making a little cinema screen is like buying a mini Winnebago. Really, we all want one the size of an aircraft carrier. And movie theatres are the only place that offer that unless you want to project Trials of a Virgin onto the side of Edinburgh Castle like a lunatic who's never heard of light pollution or contrast or any good film ever. The problem with movie theatres is that they're a social experience, similar to being on a cancer ward. You don't want them to be, but without money to go private, that's what you've got. I don't have any problem with sitting in a dark room with a hundred strangers who, prescription medicine commercials have repeatedly told me, harbour 15 to 20 individuals with irritable bowel syndrome that could set each other off at any time like a string of Pacific Shelf volcanoes. Honestly, I don't know if it's just me after a long film, but I can practically taste the vinegar coming out of my eyes as I wade through the B.O. bad breath and hot dog farts to get to the exit amongst raucous comments by people who thought Danny Glover was shamefully underused. Who decided it was a good idea to let people eat in cinemas? I was sitting there getting all psyched up to watch wacky fat middle-aged stoner bullshit when some bastard walked in with a tray, a tray of food. Eat dinner before you get to the movies, it's easy, eat dinner. And it wouldn't be a problem if the baseball kept nefarian lurking behind glass boxes filled with flavourless ruined corn could serve any food that isn't crunchy other than mechanically collected chicken and pork bits in a bun that has as much in common with actual bread as dental floss has with teeth. It'd be better to serve sandwiches, but you've still got the problem of all that chewing, basically the sound of a man peeling a very wet carpet off a tiled floor over and over and over again. I don't understand either, popcorn is rubbish. But you know, much like the bizarre acts of dressing up as very dead people on Halloween or stepping over other human beings who don't have a home or any place in society without a second thought, eating in movie theatres has become a social norm. But what can never become a social norm is talking in movie theatres. That is unacceptable. Quiet over there, I'm trying to watch Sandra Bullock and Incompatible Narcissists. Unless you're going to throw spoons at Tommy Wiseau or you're smoking a massive cigar in front of the lawyer that buried evidence preventing your fair trial. Shut up! I was in New York once watching Woody Allen Autobiographical 37, which as you can imagine was full of heartfelt emotion and people actually started shouting at the screen when the bad man was shown. This is the equivalent of trying to tell Henry VIII that Anne Boleyn is sleeping around using only your powers of concentration and Wikipedian knowledge of 16th century England. But shouting at widescreens is a rarity and I have a feeling it probably involves people who don't know exactly where they are and for whom Pixel must have been one of the most harrowing experiences of their lives. You can't blame those people, you can only pity them. My real problem with what should be an enjoyable experiences that there is always some bunk brain dickhead who starts playing with their phone oblivious to the fact that everyone behind them now has no choice but to watch them upload from marsh pics to imacunt.com. When someone's plastic life computer goes off they usually fumble around like a skydiver who's realised they shouldn't have had that bong on the plane that they've been way too chilled out about this and that they needed to pull their ripcord 15,000 feet ago. But when it comes to people checking their screens so bright blind people can see them it's all nonchalant replying to text messages and a quick game of prickville. Really movies should be treated as if they're being viewed in a combat zone where you have around four seconds to look at your iPhone before an enemy sniper zeroes in and notches his stock. Saying that I always wanted to have my phone go off in a play, be ground out by the cast and audience and stand up announcing that I'm a doctor and have been called because a little girl is very ill and I have to go and save her life and I hope that's alright with you all you condescending shit. Presumably before sitting back down to watch the rest of it. Watching a movie should be one of the easiest things anyone can do. It involves facing a single direction and kind of perceiving things and not making any noise but then again I think I admitted a low frequency whine for the duration of Sex and the City 2 which apparently is the sound the soul makes when escaping the body. Just a thought. Tonight I'm going to see either zany shenanigans about nothing, trench this, retard 1 and retard 2 make a funny... <laughs>